Is there a theory of everything, a single theory that explains all phenomena? For a long time, physicists have believed there might be. In fact, they've tried to find it. The first figure we need to look at is Isaac Newton. He wondered why apples fall to the ground, while the moon, which is huge and in the sky, does not. He realized that the moon wasn't actually orbiting in a simple sense. It wanted to move in a straight line, but Earth's pull was constantly deflecting it. Essentially, the moon was falling just like the apple. Newton expressed in mathematics that the force attracting the moon and the force causing the apple to fall are the same. This principle is known as universal gravitation. Every object with mass attracts every other object with mass. With this principle, the motions in the heavens and the motions on Earth became unified. At the age of 27, Albert Einstein published his special theory of relativity, then found himself in a predicament. His theory, which was expected to explain everything, did not account for gravity. In those days, the fact that objects fall was taken for granted as Newton's gravitational pull from below. But gravity involves acceleration, and special relativity deals with uniform motion, so the two clashed. Einstein eventually decided to incorporate gravity into his new theory, leading to the general theory of relativity. In general relativity, if you place a massive object in space, the surrounding region of space curves, that curvature affects other nearby objects. Even starlight follows this curvature. Newton's force of gravity then was really just things traveling through curved space. After Einstein merged gravity with special relativity, his theory was applauded for a while. But soon, another conflict arose, much more complex. Einstein's elegant equations no longer worked in a domain that was extremely small and seemingly trivial. That domain is smaller than atoms, where blobs of energy bustle around chaotically, the quantum world. Here, space itself is in disarray, with no clear up or down, and time itself blurred. Above all, Einstein's gravitational equations, which assume a smooth, continuous fabric, don't apply in the quantum realm. Quantum mechanics, a totally different set of rules, is required. In the 1920s, young European scholars investigated quantum mechanics in this subatomic realm. They were completely captivated by this new tiny world. Each day, they proposed new ideas, only to see them contradicted by fresh evidence the next day, and then the evidence got refuted the following day. They were enthralled by the realm of the atom, with a nucleus at its core and electrons moving around it. But no one knew exactly where those electrons were at any moment. Physicists in Copenhagen tried to explain this world, finding it rife with unpredictability. The quantum realm is utterly different from our everyday world, and its laws are unlike those of classical physics. For physicists, that's a serious issue. Why don't the laws governing the big world match the laws of the tiny world? The reason is that each realm is ruled by a different force. In fact, there are four fundamental forces. The first is gravity. If it disappears, Earth would break apart and fling us all into space. The second force saturates our world electromagnetism. The British physicist James Clerk Maxwell identified it in 1864. It's what makes cell phones, generators, electric motors, and even the internet possible. Light is a kind of electromagnetic wave, and once we realized electricity and magnetism share the same nature as light, it revealed an array of forces we'd never noticed before. These new forces reside in the atomic realm, most notably the strong force that tightly binds protons and neutrons together inside the nucleus. 
If it vanished, the nucleus would crumble instantly and solid objects would fall apart. Our world remains intact because the strong force keeps those nuclear particles locked together. The fourth force is the weak force, which drives radioactive decay in elements like uranium or cobalt. Because it's not nearly strong enough to hold protons and neutrons firmly, it mainly appears in decay processes. So, we have gravity, electromagnetism, the strong force and the weak force, four forces we dream of unifying into a single grand theory. In the mid-1960s, it was proven that electromagnetism and the weak force could unify. By the mid-1970s, we had a framework uniting electromagnetism, the weak force and the strong force. Yet gravity remained outside. But why do physicists so desperately want to merge these four forces? Our universe began as a single point, which, well, exploded. One original force splintered into four distinct forces. Gravity separated first, sending shockwaves throughout the young cosmos, then the strong force followed, and finally electromagnetism and the weak force separated. This all happened in a flash, and after 13.7 billion years, we have today's universe. If we can unify these four forces, we may figure out the universe's initial condition. We might understand where the power to move everything, from tiny insects to giant stars, came from. Einstein longed to uncover the universe's secret, but in the end, he didn't succeed. It seemed an impossible dream. Then one event made a theory of everything indispensable, the discovery of black holes. Black holes have an immense gravitational field from which nothing can return once it enters, not even light. Space-time twists wildly here, with gravity becoming infinite. So, should we use general relativity or quantum mechanics? It's unclear. Back in the early 1970s, physicists recognized a fundamental clash between quantum mechanics and gravity. In seeking the smallest building blocks of the cosmos, scientists have gone to the largest experimental site, a massive particle accelerator ring measuring 27 kilometers around. Its annual budget runs around 1.2 trillion won, about $1 billion, and about half of the world's particle physicists work there. Among other major tasks, they try to replicate conditions like the Big Bang to glimpse the universe's beginning. In the 1920s, people thought the smallest bits were protons, neutrons, and electrons. By the 1970s, we discovered quarks inside them. Now there are six types of quarks, plus muons, tau particles, and neutrinos, totaling 12 kinds of fundamental particles. According to modern physics, every object in the universe, including us, is made of combinations of these particles. But that's not the end. A hypothesis emerged that these particles themselves come from something smaller. Not points, but tiny strings. This is string theory, sometimes called a super theory, offering a super strong unification. Like the different notes from a violin's four strings, these tiny strings, with various vibrational modes, supposedly shape the universe. Originally devised to explain just the strong force, the theory turned into a possible theory of everything when it predicted a particle with no mass, a candidate for the graviton carrying gravity. These strings are about 10 to the power of minus 33 centimeters in length. If you blew an atom up to the size of the solar system, these strings would be like a single tree in comparison. Because strings have length, not merely points, you can apply both quantum mechanics and relativity in a single framework, so the theory claims. Still, can string theory truly explain it all? The biggest puzzle 
five versions of the best candidate to reconcile quantum mechanics and relativity emerged. Physicists wondered how to unify those five versions. Eventually, an 11-dimensional M-theory was proposed, reconciling the five different 10-dimensional string theories. However, this new approach introduced fresh complications. It turned out that the universe might be a giant membrane, or brain, with our four-dimensional universe as one brain, while other brains might have seven dimensions or more. We might be living on one brain among infinitely many possible universes. So, was everything created by a single string? Is that the final answer? We can't be sure. One issue is that superstring theory can't explain why our universe ended up with these particular parameters, while many other configurations also seem possible in theory. It predicts our cosmos, yes, but also countless others. It lacks a clear reason why only ours should exist. That's why physicists continue to search for that elusive inevitability.